Hi students. The next drawing tutorial is going to be on trees. I'm going to cover the palm tree, the pine tree, and the deciduous tree, the ones that drop their leaves. I'm going to do three different pieces of paper because of how kind of jammed up they got when I tried to fit them on one piece of paper. And even if you draw along with me in Sharpie, today I would suggest you have a pencil because I'm going to sketch out where the shape of the tree goes on the paper before I draw it. Okay, hope you enjoy. Okay students, so to start the palm tree, I want you to kind of see the palm options. It can be a zigzag line um, in either direction away from the stem. And then if you only see one side of the palm, it would just be the one zigzag. This is especially useful if you're going to want to color the palm tree in. You can also use just lines, again, away from the stem and moving towards the point at the end. And then here, because you can see what's you know through the other side, like you can see this side and then you can see that side through it, you kind of use a double line. And then to start your palm tree, you want to think about how it's got a very long, skinny trunk. Let me put, actually let me just move this paper because it's, you can see through it. Very long, skinny trunk. Sometimes they show it like sometimes palm trees are curved because the wind is blowing. Sometimes you see them that way. And then the palms generally sit up at the top of the tree. They're not very long. And then any coconuts that are on the tree, if it's that kind of tree, would also be kind of clustered up here attached to the trunk because the edges of the plant, the leaves really, the palms, they can't hold the weight of a coconut. So to start this in Sharpie, I'm going to give myself a kind of texture line for the trunk. You know what, I'm going to switch to the bigger Sharpie because I'm afraid you won't see this well. Texture line for the trunk. They're kind of rough and bumpy. And then I'm going to start with the palms. I can tuck the coconuts kind of in there later. So don't make too many. Um, some of them do get kind of full at the top, but some of them are sparse. So for today's drawing, we don't have to do too many. Um, we can do, let's do five. Now, you can use the zigzag line or just the lines, right? So. If I'm doing a zigzag line, it comes down here towards that edge, and then that side goes in the opposite direction. If I'm doing the lines, put them in pencil because I'm going to do a zigzag, they would go like this down here, and then you can just do another row for the back side if you can see through it, or you can put them out in that direction. Now for these that go up, the ends still go to the, the, the points of these ends still go towards this end. So just because it's blowing up in the wind, doesn't mean the direction of the palm growth changes. Okay, now let's tuck some coconuts up in here. And then now we can bring this trunk up to meet it. A lot of times there's extra thick husk either at the top or the bottom of the palm tree. You can show that with crisscross. And then you can show a little bit through here as well. Okay, and then all you have to do is erase the pencil lines.
I'm going to switch paper and come back with the pine tree. Okay, so for the pine tree, it has, generally speaking, a triangular shape, right? Like we know that a lot of these are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. So I'm going to give myself a general shape to follow. It's a triangle that fills most of the page. And then I'm going to give myself an idea of where my ground cover is. I want this to sit a little bit above the bottom of my tree so that I know my tree looks like it's really sitting on the ground. And then for this line, actually let me show you a little bit more. What I'm going to do for this is I'm going to do limbs. It does have a top, but then it has these like limb shapes kind of go out like this. And the ones that are going towards us just sit right here. 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 And then these have hanging parts here where the strong branch sits at the top and then the pine parts hang off the edges. So if I give myself this general shape to start, then it's kind of easier to follow as I fill it in. And I will show you how I fill it in, and then I'll put it on fast forward so you don't have to really like watch the whole thing in real time, because it'll take a while. So the line that I'm using is kind of like this. where it's like kind of an exaggerated um, curve. And then I'm going to put some here. Now, anywhere that, so from here to here, it can't be blank. This has to make contact somewhere. So I'm going to start there and then bring that in. And then I have to make sure that I start, you know, in um, connect to the top one before I do the next one. Okay, let me put this in fast forward and I'll show you when I'm done. Sorry kids, my fast forward video did not take. <laughs> I thought I hit record and I didn't. So this is what I did for the pine tree. I made each limb pointing out and getting just slightly wider as I go down to the bottom and then the limbs towards me are just kind of a wavy squiggle there down the center and I don't see in between them. Then I put my ground line. Okay, sorry about the fast forward part of this video but um, I hope this helps and you can certainly pause it here and take a look at what I have done and I'm going to switch papers and move over to the tree that drops its leaves. You could consider it a maple or a walnut or something like that. Hold on one second. Okay kids, so for the deciduous trees, you want to kind of think about their, um, like their canopy, their tree leaf area being substantially large and the trunk um, after it's done kind of collecting the taper from its leaves, it then tapers back out at the bottom to support the weight. Of so when students, sometimes they draw, they tend to draw a small set of leaves for a large straight tree trunk. This is not quite accurate. You want to think about how many leaves this tree has to have in order just to live, right? It's going to be a large area. And you can start by putting, make this a little bit darker so you can see it, like some circles of just shape here, right? Like you can give it a couple here and here. And this can all be then developed with your texture lines. Let's put another one right here. Okay. And then the trunk so after it's done having all these different stems, I'm sorry, limbs come out, then it's going to kind of come down here and get to where you can see it, and then taper back out again to the ground cover. 
All right, so we need this to be nice and wide and full. Okay, so let's talk about, just real quick, get another piece of paper for a second. Let's talk about the line that you're going to use for this. If you make a cloud like this, right, you are really on to something. What you want to do, though, is make it like a little bit more irregular for the tree cover. And you will use both because let's say there are limbs peeking out here, but another set of, you know, visible leaves down here, you have this opening here and you can show it in this way. So let me switch over to my Sharpie. So for starters, I can pick where I want my limbs to show and up at the very top, they will be small. I can put a couple right here. I can put a couple right here. Most trees have a place where at least one or two branches towards the top are showing. And then down here, I can make the branches for the bottom of the tree. I don't love that one, but it's in Sharpie. Get what you get, right? Okay, and then down here to this, and then maybe I'll put one more here, and then down here to this, and then once these like roots, um, root parts are done being buried into the ground, the rest of this is just ground cover. So let's talk about the leaves. So you want to start by making that sort of interesting, extra detailed. Think of these as being tiny because in the you know grand scheme of things, we know this tree is covered in leaves, but you don't really see all those leaves. When you look at the tree, you just see the color of the leaves. And then see how I'm going the opposite way here for the bottom of that? My little areas where the limbs are visible. Can make this come in. Make that go out. I don't have to follow the lines that I set up initially. If I want to change it, I can. And you know what? I think I do. I think I want a little bit more here and there. So I'll put that peeking out there and that one peeking through there. And that. And now we erase the pencil lines. Alright youngsters, I hope that this has been helpful for drawing some trees. It would be nice to put each one in a world, you know, maybe this one is the fall and they're starting to, you know, change color, come down. Maybe this one is winter, looks wintry to me. And I know for this one, I would probably put a sunset you know how I am with sunsets, right there. Okay, take care.